if I turn this over just a second, the youth build may be a great uh, conduit, not only to help that veteran, but also to encourage young folks to take a look at the military. I can tell you just recently, the chief of staff of the Air Force uh, spoke in front of the Senate committee and said the Air Force is 80% staffed right now. And uh, so there's been, I mean, there's definitely good interest. I don't think we have anywhere the the, re, the, the hesitation we used to have when it came to the military image of many years ago, especially the Vietnam vets. But at the same time, I don't know that now the, and, and it always it's cyclical with wars and peace and war and peace that we're maybe getting to the point again where um, young folks aren't looking at that as potential careers or potential advancement, uh, initial steps for advancement in their own lives. And maybe youth build, if they could do, do something like that and meet these veterans and, and uh, maybe be, encourage them to take a look at that down the road. So that's a great suggestion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you again, everybody. Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Senator. Uh, first, I'd like to thank um, uh, the New York State Homes of Community Renewal and the Long Island Services for the underserved, for those who have served. And I would personally like to invite you folks into our uh, state convention in the Veterans of Foreign Wars. I believe that that's uh, an incredible value proposition uh, for veterans. And so, um, unfortunately, I think that we have our agenda scheduled for Binghamton next month, but we'll certainly uh, include you uh, for next year. Uh, and in the short term, what we'll do is pair you up with our uh, accredited uh, state veteran service officers uh, who are on the front lines, who are submitting the claims, uh, who understand uh, the breadth and depth uh, of, um, um, of what is needed as far as some of these veterans, and not just the younger veterans. Uh, we're also talking about Vietnam era veterans and Battle of Bulge uh, veterans that were serving, at least here in my community, speaking from experience. Uh, sir, thank you for uh, thank you. Uh, your testimony today. Uh, you are an important component, and the reason why I say that is here in Albany, I am on the front lines uh, taking veterans off the streets. Uh, I have found them in the bushes, sleeping in tents uh, next to the Hudson River. Uh, I have created a collaborative effort uh, with the <clears throat> excuse me with the Veterans Administration through the Hudvash program. Uh, through uh, the Albany Housing Coalition, through their program, and even through Soldier On. The one area about Soldier On and the Albany Housing Coalition is that I do not appreciate the fact that these are competing grants. And so if we have a, a member served uh, in the Albany Housing Coalition, uh, they cannot be served uh, out in Soldier On, which is, uh, like I said, it's a real issue for us, is, is I struggle to find um, resolve uh, for these veterans. In addition to that, I think we also need to safeguard properties. And what I mean by that is uh, two years ago here in Albany County, there's been some discussion about converting the Annie Lee home into uh, a full service um, uh, veterans um, a housing unit. Uh, but again, I don't think that there's been much thought put into that only because what we're talking about here is a $15 million property, which I believe could be sold to expand the airport could be used because, again, we have uh, uh, nanotechnology here, and those are in their infancy stages. And so I have uh, lobbied uh, uh, both sides, both houses in the county legislature. Um, uh, and with that said, uh, I've asked them uh, to consider an alternative um, solution. And what that would be would be, as Senator Croce had alluded to earlier in his opening comments, is to put these veterans in dilapidated housing, fix up these housing, put those housing uh, units back on the tax rolls, uh, get the veterans the assistance that they need uh, through the collaboration uh, in the communities, um, um, enabling them to uh, become reemployed uh, and enabling them to qualify uh, for their uh, uh, VA housing benefits that they're entitled to so that they become uh, self sustaining uh, vets. And not only that, but it also becomes a self sustaining business model as opposed to uh, placing veterans in uh, communities uh, such as the example at the Annie Lee home. Again, for, in my view, I just don't see that as a uh, sustainable business model. Um, and the reason why I say that is because it lacks the transparency that it needs. In San Diego, where I was stationed for over 20 years in the Navy, 
um, the, the Veterans Village of San Diego, San Diego State University did a three-year study uh, with respect to um, uh, veterans uh, um, uh, service uh, groups such as Soldier On uh, and the Veterans Village of San Diego. And the Veterans Village of San Diego has proven to be the strongest, most comprehensive uh, program in the country. And it's because of all the services that they're providing, but they also have strength on their board. In other words, their board is comprised of admirals and generals and colonels and captains uh, across the board. And what I don't want to see here in Albany County, in my county that I grew up in, is you know, 10, 15 years later that monies from the Annie Lee home has been fleeced out of my county. And so I want those protections put in place. And I've you know, addressed the issue with the county executive and actually the director of budget for the state of New York. So those are my comments, uh, Senator. I thank you, and I thank you, Senator, for being here today. It's a collaborative effort, but it's, you know, the, the, effort, uh, the effort is absolutely wonderful, but if we don't have uh, some sort of a marketing program in place to get the word out on the streets, we're really beating a dead horse, okay? So thank you again. I look forward to seeing you at convention. Thank you. Mr. Haddon. Well, I think we're doing something right uh, as uh, by way of our legislative program because I listened very carefully and we're learning a lot more than, than what we really have to say here. We came to talk very briefly about property tax issues, but what I'm hearing is that you're working regularly, Beth, with uh, uh, service officers. Uh, we need more service officers. On our legislative agenda, we have a bill that deals with acquiring funding for service officers. It's a tax checkoff. I'm not going to belabor our legislative agenda. I just want to make a point that uh, we're on that track and we're together on that, so I'm delighted. Uh, as regards, and I heard the Dwyer Peer to Peer Program, uh, I want to thank the Senate for uh, initiating funding for that program. There's a little tweak that we'd love to have, which is that uh, those that are in, involved in peer to peer mentoring on a volunteer basis, if they chose, wouldn't it be nice if they could go on to get credentialing? So that's one of the one of our legislative initiatives, and maybe be able to work with some of your qualified counselors in a in a more constructive way. Uh, not to diminish the peer to peer program, which is the single best thing that I think has happened uh, as regards uh, our whole interface with incoming veterans. Um, you mentioned uh, your veterans court, Senator. Uh, we have been working with the Defenders Association. I want to thank the Senate again for funding uh, the Defenders Association because uh, we now have uh, an interaction with them, the BFW and Bob Becker's 31 or 32 uh, uh, veteran service organizations where uh, eventually we're pretty confident that we will have a statewide program that mirrors to a large degree what you're already doing down on Long Island. There's something going on in Buffalo, but you know there's a big middle of the state and we'd like to get to that. Uh, and finally, I'm delighted to say that regarding the 17 different property tax bills that are introduced, and I'm really glad that you're here because, because you know, we're having a hell of a time getting through them all. John has read them. I, I, you know, and I, I want to thank everybody who sponsored one of these bills. And, and I, I, I'd sit here and read every name, except that, uh, frankly, uh, we don't have the time. Uh, but we picked one out, that, and it's on our VFW legislative agenda. Bob's group uh, endorses it as well. It happens to be your bill, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we can talk about that a little later, but I, I really just uh, wanted to say that right now, a lot of these things that we do are not funded, uh, they, or they're funded partially, and thank you for some of that. Um, we have two other crazy bills on the agenda, and when you see them, don't discount them. They have to do with improving chari charitable gaming, all right? And, and, and frankly, without that, most of these programs, peer-to-peer, -peer, for example, really couldn't survive. I mean, yes, uh, the, the Senate particularly has funded peer-to-peer -peer in many upstate counties, but we have, uh, you know, a larger universe than that. And so right now we're funding it ourselves. So as you see those bills matriculate, don't go, ooh, you know, what, how important is that? Very important right now. So uh, thank you. Appreciate thank it. you very much. That's an excellent uh, way to segue into our next half hour, which is going to be taxation. And uh, with that, uh, Mr. McGovern, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving us a little overview. Uh, thank you, and uh, good morning. 
Um, as, as recently pointed out, uh, property taxes uh, are, are a concern in New York State uh, for all homeowners and particularly it can be for veterans uh, as, they, uh, as they try to move into home ownership and maintaining home ownership. Um, property taxes are sort of unique in that the state does not administer the property tax. It's a function of local government, local school districts through the assessment procedures. Um, so there, there is no direct control that we have over property taxes. We simply help uh, and hope to help uh, local municipalities and school districts administer uh, exemptions and assessments. Um, currently, there are three different exemptions available uh, distinctly for veterans in New York State. Uh, we have what's called the eligible funds exemption. This is the oldest exemption. Um, it was largely replaced in the 1980s, so most of the current exemptions that are there uh, tend to be World War II Korea of veterans who receive the sort of funds uh, that are required to be eligible uh, to be used to purchase a home uh, and continue to purchase homes that they have to use these funds in the purchase. Right now, veterans uh, would receive up to $7,500, uh, recently increased amount uh, off their assessments uh, for the purposes of taxation. And that applies uh, to municipal taxes only. That is not available for school district taxes. Um, in the 1980s, that was largely replaced with what's called the alternative veterans exemption. Um, and that is available to those who served during various defined periods of war um, since uh, from, from the Spanish-American War through to the current day. Uh, we are currently for exemption purposes in, a, in an open-ended period of war, beginning with active duty service from August 2nd, 1990, continuing right through today and in perpetuity until that's changed. Um, the, the alternative veterans exemption uh, has several portions. It's, it's available uh, solely as a 15% exemption uh, to those who served during those periods. An additional 10% is then available to those who can demonstrate service in a combat zone. Uh, and then uh, for disabled veterans, uh, they can have up to uh, up to a 50% of their disability rating, resulting for a fully disabled veteran in a, from a combat zone would receive a 75% exemption off their uh, municipal. And it's also available now uh, in the last few years for school district purposes at local option of the school districts. Um, the local municipalities, once again, have local option, as in many property tax exemptions, to set uh, the caps all, the, all those amounts are capped. The 10, 15, 50% amounts are capped. Um, municipalities have a number of, of they, there's two different reduced maximums. There's a state basic maximum, and then there are a variety of increased maximums, especially for what are known as um, high appreciation municipalities, where there's what's called a sales differential factor. In fact, they're, they're above the median home price in the state, so they have expanded options for caps. Uh, those go all the way up to $250,000 at the highest level for uh, disabled veterans. As I mentioned, school districts now can receive the alternative, can opt to um, use the alternative veterans exemption. That's, That's the optimal word there is opt. Opt, yes. <laughs> and that is, that is the optimal word in most residential property tax exemptions that it's many of the the factors or to participate at all is, is based in local option of each taxing, taxing jurisdiction, the county, the town, city, village, school district, special district, uh, all have their own options whether to opt in. And in the case of the alternative veterans exemption, uh, get to set whether they're available for co-ops, whether they're available for gold star parents, whether they're available at what level of, of maximum, whether it's reduced or increased. Uh, each jurisdiction sets those on their own and not in any sort of uh, joint move. They're all separate to the governing body of the jurisdiction. Um, the school district has, uh, that option has become more popular. Uh, in the initial year, I believe it was three years ago, we only had four school districts who were able to make uh, the initial deadline to get it passed before the cutoff date. Uh, we are now at... Uh, just over 220 school districts, so about a third of the school districts in the state are, have now opted into some degree, excuse me, some degree. Uh, so there has been a year over year increase every year in the school districts that are participating. And I know from uh, veterans that I've spoken to that have called us uh, 
there is there's a lot of advocacy going on at local school board meetings and trying to get the word out that simply adopting it does not in any way reduce their ability to raise taxes. It simply shifts the burden uh, among all other taxpayers besides veterans. That it, it does not actually which is a decision appropriately funds. left to that level of government. Uh, I know so many um, so many veterans groups have been concerned about different. Uh, districts that are not implementing these these credits and they, they look to the the state legislature as like an appeals court an appellate division uh, and it's that, that's not how the, our system of government works it's a duly elect we're a home rule state there are duly elected boards of education and village town and county legislatures and um, uh, you know we have to defer to that level of government certainly we encourage the districts to give the the veterans particularly the ones who are uh, combat disabled, uh, some of those benefits, but all the veterans who've earned them certainly deserve them. Uh, and we you know, applaud our veterans groups who go to these different board meetings and, and, uh, and advocate on behalf of veterans. But again, it's, uh, it is a local option. Yes. And, um, and you know, we have to, it's our system of government. We, that's what we fought for, so that's where we are. Sir, did you have a question? Yeah, we, uh, in Schenectady here, we lobby our school board the taxes we when we lobbied to Snisky Una and we won. Well, we got it on the board on the board's uh, agenda and they passed it. So really it's up to the veterans in the community to lobby their school board or the property tax board, whatever it may be. Right. So it's us. Yes. Yes. I, I get your point regarding the local governments, you know, wanting someone to sort of tell them what to do uh, so they don't have to you know, experience peer pressure, but frankly, uh, from the VFW's perspective, I don't think I've ever heard a complaint about the property tax exemptions being a local option. I've, I've, I've heard, heard I've, no, I've heard of a few in Westchester County that, uh, you know, there, there been some, some really? recalcitrant boards uh, that, that don't want to do this and don't want to, again, shift that burden because that's what, essentially what you're doing in it, but that's a local decision, you know, yeah, I don't, right. I, that's their judgment. Right. Uh, so. You have two words you put in your bills, may and shall. And that really puts us in the jam. Right. Sorry. And it does create a significant gap. Yeah. And I would just say um, it, it's, it's not unique to veterans' exemptions. I mean, being a, being a home rule state, many many exemptions, whether it's for seniors disabled, or for disabled persons, firefighters, yeah. are all, yeah. all come with that local component because it, it is a local tax. It's not a state tax. So. Well, otherwise, it's an unfunded mandate from Albany, cool. which I know Correct. where I live is not a popular thing. It, it, gives, it, right. gives, uh, it gives local uh, taxing jurisdictions fine control over their ability to raise funds. Um, but that being said, I, I just wanted to say also um, there's a third option uh, that in, in the last decade has come into play, the, what's called the Cold War Veterans Exemption. Uh, that is available to those who have served uh, since the beginning of the Cold War in 1945 uh, that did not fall into the active periods of war um, that, that were defined in, in the alternative veterans exemption. And that, that allows much along the same sort of local options with um, the capped amounts and participation, it, it gives either a 10 or a 15 percent, which is the local option of the taxing jurisdiction on what they wish to offer. Uh, that is available solely to municipal, county, town taxes. Not, uh, it is not available for school taxes at this time. Um, uh, right now, and that is, it's an option to participate even. Right now, that has increased to, we're looking at about 55 percent of uh, local municipalities have opted to offer to that. To their uh, to their Cold War veterans. Overall, um, I, I think the veterans exemption programs are are somewhat of a success. Uh, as of last year, we have just over half a million exemptions being given to veterans uh, on on those unique parcels throughout the state. Well, I want to thank you and uh, commend you. I know it's a lot of uh, numbers and details for the division certainly to handle in the department, but. If our stated goal, if we mean what we say, and we want veterans to come back after their service to New York, live here, raise their families here, build businesses here, uh, then this is a, a vital component because of the the, the tax rate in New York and, and uh, compared with other places that veterans live during their service in the United States, where it's uh, relatively easy to live and uh, more affordable, certainly in the South and in the West in our country. Northeast Corridor is very expensive to live in. Uh, tax policy is a big part of bringing veterans home and helping them 
you know, f become part of the community and have the ability to, to live and work and, and raise a family here. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, next will be the Director of New York State Division of Veterans Affairs, Colonel Hess. Good afternoon. Uh, I do appre appreciate all the efforts you're putting forward to support our veterans. Thank you. Uh, out outreach has been mentioned a couple times today. And, uh, and, and getting the information out and, and connecting with veterans that we may, may have never connected with before is so important, as Senator Golden had mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, I'll make a plug for the New York State Veterans app. We're getting ready to go into uh, version two. Uh, and, and basically, you know, it puts things in people's hands because everybody's using smartphones now as, as opposed to desktop and laptop computers. Uh, something that will be interesting that we're getting ready to test for version two is something called geofencing. So we'll be able to put a radius around certain parts of New York State where we think veterans may be attending if they have the app. You know, it'll show them the benefits and what's available in those areas that are geofenced. We're going to start it with the National Purple Heart Hall of Honor. Uh, we're in discussions with them to, to make sure they're good with it, and then we're going to plan on expending it from there. Uh, I was asked to come talk about tax policies today. Uh, Jim was kind enough to cover a lot of what was uh, on my list today, but what I will add uh, on, on all the property tax programs he talked about is it, it's not an automatic exemption. You know, the key is that if you're an eligible veteran, you have to do your initial exemplum application form to your accessor. Uh, usually one March is when it's due, and you have to have proof of discharge under honorable conditions, including times and places served in active duty, uh, your DD-214 as, as part of the application. Uh, I, I know right now there's legislation in the Senate that would extend the Cold War property tax uh, and also extend the, the, the eligible funds tax exemption. I'm not sure where that stands right now, but I do know that, that that's out there. Uh, but, a lot, but, you know, we started this conversation off by talking about what are, what, are, what are the gaps? You know, what can we do to make a difference? So when it comes to the property tax programs, the biggest gap that's out there really, in my opinion, is that National Guard members and members of the Reserve who over, were ever only M-Day soldiers are not eligible for any of these programs. So, you know, you can be serving in the New York National Guard for 30 years, have been an M-Day soldier your entire time, you know, but you, you're not eligible for these programs. I, I, I don't know if there's a way to go back and take a look at it, but I, I mean, I think we really should take a good hard look at our National Guard and our reserve forces, you know, to ensure that they get some, some credit for their service as well. I mean, you're, specific, you're specifically talking about National Guard or reserve who are not deployed because correct. in that case, they're covered. Correct. Yes, okay. sir. So National Guard and reserve who never were recalled to active duty? Yes, sir. They basically have a DD-220 mm -hmm. instead of a DD-214. So I have a few examples that I will uh, submit to your legislative director. Okay. You know, and, and as I've said, you know, my goal in my position is always to try to be more inclusive. Uh, the idea of the tax programs comes up often when I'm out and about. You, you know, the discussion of the zombie houses has come up quite a bit while I'm out and about. And, and they're all important issues, and they're all issues that veterans want to get involved in. Uh, so the other tax program that's out there is the tax credits for employers hiring post-9-11 veterans. Uh, the governor implemented a $74 million tax credit for private businesses hiring post-9-11 veterans. Uh, to qualify for a tax break under this program, the business must hire post-9-11 veterans to a full-time position of at least 35 hours per week uh, for a year. And this program ends at the end of this year, on January 2017. Uh, I don't know if there's discussions to extend the program, but as of right now, that's that's when the program will end. Uh, you know, the the good news on the employment side of the house is that you know veterans are no longer what they say disadvantaged when it comes to employment. So in most uh, age groups, as they break down veteran unemployment, we're doing as well, if not better, than the same age groups of other demographics across the state. Where the challenge comes in, and it's again, it's the same in. in in all demographics, but when you hit that 45 plus age group, you know, those unemployment rates are higher than, than everybody else. You know, somebody that maybe have been working for 20 years, their, their place of employment goes out of business, whatever the case may be, you know, that still want to be a part of the workforce, you know, then 
that that's where those that that's where that particular gap is when it comes to unemployment. Uh, you know, uh, we do a lot of stuff for post 9/11 veterans. I said it uh, the last time we were in here. You know, the goal is try to expand some of these programs. Uh, because the population of post 9-11 veterans in New York State really hasn't changed uh, in the last three years that I've been in this position. It's below 100,000. You know, our, our biggest population of veterans in New York State is still the Vietnam era veterans. So they're the ones that then fall into these age categories where it's more difficult for them to get employment. So I just, I just throw that out there as, as something to consider and, and, you know, really get to those gaps that we're looking at and how we, how we can help different demographics of our, of our veteran population. Uh, I look forward to seeing the, the three pieces of legislation that uh, you mentioned in the beginning, especially the, the 500 civil service positions. There would be nobody happier than me to see all 500 of those positions filled with a veteran. Uh, I think that would be great. And, and the Veteran Employment Task Force, you know, I hope I'm asked to participate when the uh, task force comes about. So thank you. Uh, so I also want to just say for the record that um, with regard to tax policies, uh, we are in receipt of New York State School Boards Association's testimony on regarding tax policies. We've had a, a roundtable discussion about our feelings representing different sectors, both in, in the government, uh, for not-for-profits, and for veterans organizations. But we are in receipt of their uh, testimony on this topic. Uh, and again, we are a home rule state, and we, we recognize that. I think that's all we had. Oh, sorry. Can yes. I speak to just one thing. Yes, I'm absolutely. Please, Mr. Uh, Hannon. Uh, I, I referenced your bill, um, which uh, which is um, uh, Senate three one three four B, and um, you should be gratified to know that the Assembly has has done some, I think, substantive amendments. And they seem to be focused on it as well. And one of the things that Colonel Hess wanted to see have happen is the National Guard issue. And I believe the language, but we'll take this up with your staff at a later date, but I believe the language addresses the National Guard issue if they were deployed at any time during a taxable year. So uh, hopefully we can get the, your office and, and uh, the Assembly together on some of these changes. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there is another. Uh, Vets bill. Senator Larkin couldn't be with us today, but obviously he remains uh, very <clears throat> diligent about ensuring that the veterans buyback bill, uh, which is supported not only by our veterans community, but by a lot of individuals in law enforcement who are also veterans, uh, active, reserve, retired, uh, who are currently serving in law enforcement and the fire services, uh, important to all that that veterans buyback bill, uh, which has been passed by both houses, uh, that it be uh, signed by the governor. Um, that's extremely important. And uh, uh, Colonel, I hope that uh, we have good news in the coming months because it's uh, it's so important for our our veterans, uh, both former and current. So, did you have something? Sir? We just came from a meeting with uh, someone, Amy Poulin, on the buyback bill, and yeah. uh, we're, we're hoping that we don't get that veto again. Right. No, it's, uh, it's, it's important. Obviously, you know, everyone in this room has a special place in their heart for our veterans community. Uh, a lot of you are veterans, so that certainly helps. But um, we need to ensure that the state sends the right messages to our veterans. And we've done a good job. Our, our last two budgets, we've seen increases to our veterans community. We've seen increased tax incentives. We've seen <coughs> support for mental health, job training, education. Uh, we're doing a good job when we're rated every year nationally. New York is, uh, is, is, is up there. Our state budgets reflect that. But, you know, there's, a, there's an increased population. Um, I don't see the world getting any more peaceful anytime soon. I, I, I suspect that we'll have active and reserve forces um, on the other side of the world for a long time. And they're going to be coming home. They're going to want to come home to New York because that's why they left to begin with, to fight for the place that they love as we all do this great state and um, it's worth fighting for and uh, they're worth fighting for when they get home. So I'm uh, very pleased that you all were able to spend some time with us today. What will happen now, uh, like the last round table, is you will get after action notes about uh, what we discussed and the areas that we're going to pursue legislation. 
And then when we reconvene the roundtable, um, we will be able to tell you where we are on that legislation and successive legislation uh, or previous legislation that came from the other roundtable. So that's the goal. And uh, I, I really, truly appreciate all your time today. Hattie, thank you for driving up from Long Island. Is there anything you'd like to tell the board? Uh, no, there was just I'm, I'm hearing a lot about the, the zombie home product projects and the and the tax um, the, the, What he was just talking about um, and you said that you can't mandate them to to require the tax incentives for veterans uh, but Yeah, that's correct. Maybe there's a way to if if the zombie home projects improve the communities and the, the local governments are able to benefit from the zombie home projects maybe there's a way to Incentivize that. That's a good word. <laughs> That's an excellent word, Albany. Incentivize. Maybe, yeah. I, I don't. That was. That excellent. was just excellent idea. We'll we'll have the uh, the team look into it. Any other final remarks anyone would like to make before we wrap up? We're actually finishing about ten minutes early, which is on time in my world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Thank you.